Hi guys, this is uh, Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. And this short video is going to be another example of a Boolean algebra reduction. Okay, so this is a Boolean algebra algebra reduction. Okay. And what we're going to consider is we're going to consider the function f is equal to a ordered with 1 and with a ordered with 0. And we're going to see what we get. Okay, brilliant. Okay, <coughs> so <coughs> what we know is uh, we have a number of important identities. Uh, we've previously looked at these in a previous video. We had the commutative law, the associative law, distributive, the identity, negation, double negation, adepotent law, universal bound, absorption, complements of one and zero, and de Morgan's laws. Yeah. Okay. So we have a number of identities that are really important for us, which are going to help us with our reductions. Okay. So what we want to consider is we want to consider how to solve this particular function or to reduce this function. And there's, I suppose there's many ways that we could do this. I suppose the first probably technique that we could consider is we could consider what's inside the brackets here on the left hand side, which is a ordered with one. And we have an important identity or identities that are important identities. Yeah. Okay, that are important. And one of our important identities says that anything ordered with one is simply equal to one. Okay, this is an important identity. Uh, this particular identity is what's known as the universal bound identity. Okay, so in this situation here, this function actually reduces down to well, a ordered with one is equivalent to one. So this becomes one ended with a ordered with zero. Okay. Now, looking inside this bracket here, okay, we have another expression, which is a ordered with zero. And that's another important identity for us, okay? This is known as the identity uh, property, okay? And it says that anything ordered with zero is simply equal to itself. So in this situation here, this becomes one ended with a, okay? And we have another important identity which says that a ended with one is simply equal to a. Okay, uh, this is also uh, uh, this is also known as the identity for an and. Okay, but I suppose this isn't in the, the form that we require. Our identity says that a ended with one is equal to a. What we have here is one is ended with a. Okay, but we have another important identity which is known as the commutative law for an and that says that anything ended with another thing is the same as when we commute the terms. Okay. So basically what that means is that 1 ended with a is the same as a ended with 1, okay? And now we can rely on our identity law for and to actually tell us that this is equivalent to a. And that's one technique we could have applied, okay? Uh, we could have done this many other ways. Uh, let's do this again. Uh, I'm going to do this a little bit quicker, okay? I suppose what we could have done is we could have distributed both of these terms okay, across the AND and across the OR here. So this would have become A ANDED with A gives us A ANDED with A. A, sorry, A ANDED with A gives us A. Okay, or A ANDED with 0, yeah? Okay, or 1 ANDED with A. Okay, or we have 0, and sorry, 1 ANDED with 0. 1 ANDED with 0, okay? That's our final thing. Now what we know is that anything ANDED with itself is another key identity. Uh, we have A ANDED with A is always going to be equal to A. And this is the uh, idempotent law for ANDing. That's another important identity. Uh, we also know that A ANDED with 0 is equal to 0. Okay, that's another key identity for us. Okay, uh, and this is called the universal bound for AND. Okay, and already we've already proven earlier on, or we already talked about that one ANDED with A is the same as A ANDED with one, and A ANDED with one is the same as A. So all of this here reduces down to, well, A ANDED with A is A, uh, A ANDED with zero is zero. Okay, uh, one ANDED with A is the same as A ANDED with one. 
and this term here remains the same. One ended with zero. Okay. So what we have now is we have, well, we could associate the a with the zero, and we know that a ended with one is a, or with okay. If you have a 1, we know that an AND only ever gives us a 1 when both of the inputs to the AND are simultaneously 1. Otherwise it gives us a 0. So a high voltage ANDed with a low voltage is always going to give us a low voltage. Yeah. Okay. Now in this situation here we know that A ORD with 0 from our identities is equal to A. So this becomes A. So now we have A ORD with A ORD with 0. Yeah. Uh, we could associate again, we could have A ORD with A, okay, ORD with 0, when we associate the two A's together. And what we know from one of our previous identities as well, is that A ORD with A is simply equal to A. And this is the independent law for ORs. Okay? So this now reduces down to A ORD with 0. And we've already solved this, A ORD with 0 was equal to A. So there's another way that we could have uh, done this particular reduction. I suppose the important thing to keep in mind here is that there's many ways to do the reductions, yeah, okay? Uh, depending on what particular path and what particular identities you pl apply and the order of the application of the identities. Okay, so I hope that was helpful. Uh, my name is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Thank you.